Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Elementor OS 6 Odin will probably release before the end of the year, and since I contributed to their App Center for Everyone campaign, I got access to the daily builds for that new release. This is the first of a series of videos about the various new features that we can expect in Odin, and we'll start with the desktop features themselves. Please remember this is still very much in development, and if some things don't look right or don't work as intended as of yet, it's perfectly normal. So let's take a look right after this. This video is brought to you by Safing's Portmaster. Safing is an open source company which aims to help users protect their privacy and focus on transparency. They developed the Portmaster, a privacy suite that lets you protect your network usage and give you system-wide ad and tracking blocking capabilities. It's open source, completely modular, and lets you see what the system is trying to send and block it either on a global setting or on a per app basis. The Portmaster is and will always be free, and it gives you a super practical dashboard where you can monitor your general security level and status, and you can dive into the various connections your device is trying to make, like here the Epic Game Store calling some unwanted tracking URL. That's where you can move to the global and app settings and block any type of connection or set up filter lists. The Portmaster is still under development and is in alpha, but you can download it for free from safing.io. You can also ask anything you'd like to the Safing team, either on Reddit, via email, Twitter, Try Portmaster for yourself and let the team know what you think. Ok, so the Elementary OS desktop experience in Odin is pretty much the same as what we had in version 5. Pantheon Seal Sports wing panel on top and the plank dock in the bottom, with an application menu in the top left and the system indicators in the right corner. Don't expect any reinvention of the desktop, instead we're going to get a lot of improvements to how we can tweak and make our system our own. The first thing you can notice is the new theme. It's not finished yet, as you can see with this back button, which doesn't support the back arrow shape yet, but the basic elements are still there. I really, really like the improvements to the style sheet. Everything feels more physical and contrasted with more raised, cleaner buttons. The switches, checkboxes and radio buttons haven't changed all that much visually, but they already looked amazing in the first place. The headers are more raised, which makes them pop a lot more and better differentiates the Windows content from the window itself. I do feel that unfocused windows are less recognizable from focused windows now. This new theme isn't a huge departure from the previous one. It still looks recognizably like elementary OS, but it departs from the older macOS-like look and comes into its own. The rounded window corners also had a touch of modernity since we are starting to get used to that on our smartphones as well, and generally I feel that the look and feel of Odin will still be elegant and modern even after the usual two years before the next update. The icons themselves haven't really changed. I like them, but I'd like to see some changes in this department in the future to get away from the Tango-esque cartoony look they have. I like that they have very recognizable shapes, which you don't find on themes that put icons in a circle, on a square, but the look is starting to feel a little bit dated here in my opinion. The revamped theme is accompanied by a new feature you'll notice right after install and in the settings. You'll have the ability to switch to a dark mode and select an accent color for buttons, switches and controls. This is very, very nice. It kind of solves the issue with theming and personalization, which has always been tricky since GNOME 3 and in Elementary OS especially, since they use their own style sheet that tends to not behave well if you replace it by a generic common GNOME theme. It does so in a user-friendly way, with the selection of specific colors that should all work in terms of legibility and contrast. The new dark mode, though, will probably make some people a bit mad, since it doesn't apply automatically to all applications. It is not a dark theme that just replaces the current theme with darker backgrounds, it is a mode that applications can opt into or not, so it's up to the app developer to decide if they want to support it or not. By default, not all Elementary OS 6 apps will use it, or at least not in this current iteration, which is strange because I'd expect at least the system apps to have a dark version, but maybe they just haven't been updated yet. The system indicators and the dock will also turn dark, at least, but for third-party applications, the behavior will be less consistent. I'd expect Elementor OS apps to opt in into that dark mode, since a lot of them already offer a dark theme of their own, but regular GNOME or GDK apps might not make use of that setting, since it's very much an Elementor OS specific thing, and as such, I don't know if they'll ever make use of the dark mode. Users that want a fully dark desktop might have to resort to force the dark style sheet as the main theme, maybe through elementary tweaks in the future. Now the notification center also has a new look, with more legible grouping of notifications per application. The previous iteration was serviceable but not that pretty, and I think the new one is a lot more user-friendly and looks good as well. 
To complete these improvements, there is a new accessibility feature, which, in true elementary fashion, is not hidden in an accessibility tab, but displayed where users might expect it to be, and it's the dyslexia-friendly text. It switches the system font to a more readable one for people suffering from dyslexia. It's a good improvement to make sure elementary OS is as accessible to as many people as possible. And speaking of fonts, there is a new system-wide font called Inter. It replaces the previous defaults, and it looks way better. I've been using it on Element OS 5 for a few months now, and it really looks more professional. It's less wide, more compact, and it just looks better defined. It's a crisp font, and it polishes up the look. So that's it for the look and feel of the desktop. In general, I think these improvements make Element OS look a lot more modern, while retaining its distinct feel and identity. I like it. But the new desktop features don't stop there, the settings have received some attention as well. A small change, but a welcome one, is the ability to right-click on the desktop to change the wallpaper or access the display settings. Don't expect icons on the desktop, it's still not coming, although there's the desktop folder app in the App Center, or there will be once the developer can update it to support Elementor OS 6. The housekeeping feature is now enabled by default. It automatically cleans up some temporary elements like trashed files and temporary files after a certain amount of time. It already existed in Elementor OS Hera, but had to be turned on manually, so it's nice that it's now the default. The online accounts part of Elementor OS had always been pretty limited, with just last.fm, fastmail and generic IMAP email support. But this might change in Odin, since they seem to be revamping the online accounts panel as well, so you might see the ability to add Google accounts, Nextcloud accounts and a lot more since GNOME already supports that. It's a very, very welcome change, although most providers don't appear in this list yet, you still get the default 3 that you already got in Elementor OS 5. So we'll have to see how that evolves, and if the Elementary team adds more providers, just like GNOME did. The settings also add a Wacom tablet panel. Since I don't own any of that kind of hardware, I can try it out, but I expect it lets users tweak the settings of their graphics tablets, and that's good for designers and artists. There is also a new wallet panel, which will serve to save, encrypted and on your device only, some payment information for you to use in the App Center. This might be the first step towards purchasing between devices, and restoring these purchases. Since it's all stored on device and not linked to an online account, I have no issue with this, and if it allows to restore all your application purchases, it might encourage some people to use the pay what you want model of the App Center, which is a good thing. And finally, users will find all the necessary controls for their Flatpak installed applications in the App's Settings panel. It allows you to enable or disable certain permissions on a per-app basis, just like in GNOME, and it's a good first step, since Odin will work towards better integration of Flatpak applications. It works like you'd expect on Android, with the various permissions required by the application, and the ability to disable them individually. And that's it for the new desktop features, it's not finished yet, but it certainly looks very, very good already. I won't be moving to Odin just yet, first because it's not a stable release yet, and second because the Elementor OS apps available in the App Center haven't been ported for Odin, so I would miss too much of what's necessary for me to work, but I must say I'm very excited to use my desktop of choice on a newer base with more up-to-date drivers, packages and libraries, and a host of new features to make my desktop my own. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, if you did feel free to like or dislike if you didn't. Subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like this one, and if you want to help support the channel, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers or YouTube members and get access to a monthly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next videos I'll work on. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!